3D art out of Lego. Wow, I never thought I'd ever say that phrase. But what we've done is we've taken a really cool picture frame and put lots of Lego inside it. Now that Lego is going in all different directions. There's studs hanging from the top, from the bottom, the sides, and of course the background. But what it really leads us to is something that's a, a pretty neat trick with Lego. It's called forced perspective. Wow, it's a big mouthful, I know, but hear me out and I'm gonna do a little drawing to show you what it is. Because the frame was only about 10 to 12 studs deep, we couldn't actually have a picture frame that went back for miles. It just simply is impractical. So we do this really neat trick where we have what's called a foreground, a middle ground, and a background to our advantage. Now I'm gonna do a drawing here and I'm gonna show you how that works. So when we think about things in real life, if you are standing right in front of me, I'm really quite large. And as I step back further and further, I start shrinking off into the distance. I get smaller and smaller. So what we can do is we can trick the human eye into thinking that something is further away than it is by making it small. And allow me to draw with some very simple stick figures because I'm a little bit winded at the moment. So we have our, here we are, this is you, okay? And you are looking this way. Now, if you have someone in front of you that is the same height as you, they are about the same height. And of course, as they go off into the distance, they actually shrink down to a point and the people get smaller and smaller and smaller down to almost nothing as they fade off into the distance. So that is how we get our distance calculation. Now what force perspective does is we actually only have, because we can't go off into the distance, we only have this space with which to work. And here you are again. By the way, you're looking really great at the moment. Have you lost some weight? Yeah, looking, looking fantastic. So you have your person in the foreground, then you have a person in the middle ground, then you have a person in the background. They're really quite small. They actually normally would be way off here in the distance, but by actually making them smaller in this same space, it allows us to give the distance that they're shrinking off. Now it doesn't have to be people, it could be buildings, it could be mountains, it could be rivers, it could be lots of things. By having it in this very short space, but by making them actually smaller out of Lego, that's what gives us what we call the forced perspective. It's a perspective, but we've actually forced it together and forced to do it. It's actually a really hard thing to do in Lego. And today all of the teams did it amazingly well in their 3D art. We had a great example of it last year, if you can remember last year's series, where David and G made two aeroplanes flying over the top of the countryside. They used force perspective really well in that build. It's an amazing technique to master. It does take lots of practice. And if I was to give you a tip at home, start off by people. You could use this person here in the middle as your minifig, make a larger Lego person and a smaller Lego person, and that'll help you get your force perspective. If you can master this one, chances are one day you could be on Lego Masters.